President Healy, it is my distinct honor to present Bobby Sager, an entrepreneur, philanthropist, photographer, and author who embodies Babson's core belief that entrepreneurship is the world's most powerful force for economic and social change. Bobby, you graduated from Brandeis University with a degree in economics and then from Yale University with a master's degree in management. You also did other stuff, as you said, which includes being the executive producer of the film A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, which won the Sundance Film Festival Special Jury Prize and the Venice Film Festival. You were also the inspiration for the NBC television drama, The Philanthropist. You led the transformation of Gordon Brothers from a small Boston-based jewelry business into a multi-billion dollar financial services organization. You and your family then formed the Sager Family Traveling Foundation and Roadshow. This has taken you on a all, on a worldwide journey and to, to learn things in your own lives to change the lives of people around you and to deliver hope in places where hope is scarce. Since 2000, after dozens of trips to such places as Rwanda, Pakistan, and Palestine to teach entrepreneurship and business skills and to train local educators, your family and their hands-on philanthropic efforts has inspired and challenged people to reach their full potential across societies around the world. You have been honored by the Young Presidents Organization, a group with more than 21,000 young CEO members representing 125 different countries, as the first recipient of their Global Humanitarian Award, as the author of The Power of the Invisible Sun, and as a photographer whose art, art has been viewed by more than four million people around the world, your words and images focus attention on and bring hope to some of our world's most dangerous places. You have been invited to address the United Nations General Assembly. You had introduced Tibetan monks to Western science with your friend, the Dalai Lama. You challenged prisoners who participated in the Rwandan genocide to trade conflict for understanding. You call this eyeball to eyeball philanthropy. You work tirelessly with full commitment to create positive change at both a personal and a global level. Today, we honor, celebrate, and welcome you as a member of the Babson College community. Thank you very much. By virtue of the power granted to Babson College by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and by the authority given to me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you, Bobby Sager, the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities here and everywhere appertaining to this degree. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Bobby Sager to the, and welcoming him to the Babson community. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, President Healy, distinguished guests, faculty, and last but certainly not least, graduating students. Congratulations! It really is an honor to be here today. Entrepreneurs play such an important role in the world. Very often, making something out of nothing creating opportunity for themselves and for others. The, um, the uh, education minister from Jordan told me once that people that are graduating now will, on average, in the course of their lives, have six different occupations, not just different jobs, but six different occupations. And if that's anything close to right, then obviously, 
people need to con continue to learn through their whole life. So today is not the end of your education. Today is very much just the beginning. I'm among the most selfish people I know. That's why I've spent most of the last 14 years living in some of the most difficult places on earth. Sometimes sleeping in tents and sometimes crapping in holes, all because I'm trying to make a difference in the lives of others. By being hands-on and eyeball to eyeball with the people I'm trying to help, I get to learn things and feel things and experience, and that's the fullness in life. And that's what I mean by being selfish. I stopped working to make money 14 years ago. I only ever made money so that I could have choices in life. And then it's a matter of what you do with those choices. My choice was to try to reapply the same entrepreneurial skill set that I had used to make money to make a difference. I didn't start um, to go into philanthropy because I felt guilty that I had made too much money. I wasn't struck by a bolt of lightning with some desire to give back to society. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to seeing suffering. There's no kumbaya, there's no sentimental filter. I'm not a do-gooder, I'm a doer who's figured out that hands-on, eyeball to eyeball making a difference is a way to live a very full life. The way that we help people in our foundation is that we don't give handouts, we don't do charity. We help people to help themselves. I'm sure many of you have heard the observation that uh, it's always better to give the hungry man a fishing pole and teach him how to fish rather than to simply give him a fish. But we try to take that logic one step further because unless you also teach him how to sell the fish, all he's ever going to be able to do is eat fish. <laughs> so very often people, too often, maybe not very, but too often, people throw up their hands and say, you know what, the world's too screwed up. There's nothing I can really do to, to make a difference. It's kind of, a, I can't really move the needle, so I don't really have to feel that bad about not trying. What I came here today to ask you to consider is the idea of what I call concrete baby steps. Concrete baby step, just pretty much the way that it sounds. Uh, an example of it would be to be someone's mentor, to give someone a computer, to, to serve on a committee, uh, or to just give people hope. And the point is, if I do my concrete baby steps, and you do yours, and you do yours, and we all do ours, that cumulatively, when you add all those up, that may be the very best chance that we have of achieving real, sustained change. No big ideas, no magic wands, just each of us doing our own concrete baby steps whenever, wherever, and however we can. And to make the point about the power of concrete baby steps, I'd ask you, does anybody know how many seeds are in an apple? Quickly, anybody? You're, you're smart people, right? What? I heard someone say 20 and someone say six. Just to cut to the chase, I don't have any idea how many seeds are in an apple. <laughs> but I know how to find out. I cut the apple in half and, and I'll count the seeds. But while it's easy to find out how many seeds are inside the apple, you can never know how many apples may one day come from one of those seeds, how many trees, or even how many orchards. So we plant the seeds. And I'd ask you to consider, who over the last three decades is the world's greatest political leader? putting aside religious leaders like His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, or the Pope, but a political leader in the truest sense of leader, someone who has really walked the talk of compassion and purpose and, and clarity and accountability and, of course, results. I think most people would agree that it was Nelson Mandela, but I didn't come here today to state the obvious. <clears throat> the real point is to ask the question, 
okay, if Nelson Mandela is the greatest leader, who's second on the list? And who's third? And who's 10th and who's 20th? And I think that when you think a little bit about it, you may come to the same conclusion that I have that unfortunately it's not much of a list. And where I go from there is we're the list, all of us, each of us doing our own concrete baby steps. The idea that you can outsource fixing our broken world to governments and large organizations is very last century. Obviously, governments have a role to play, but very often they need to be shown the way, and always we, as informed citizens, need to hold them accountable. When my family and I had the great honor of visiting with Nelson Mandela at his home in Johannesburg many years ago, our daughter Tess asked him, so picture we're the four of us sitting in, in Nelson Mandela's living room, huddled around him, he's sitting in his big chair that he sits in in his living room, and she says to him, Madiba, you're such a hero to my mother and father. I was wondering, who are some of your heroes? It's not a bad question from a nine-year-old. And Nelson Mandela took her hand and looked her right in the eye and said, my heroes are not presidents of countries or prime ministers or cabinet ministers. It is someone who has declared war on poverty, on disease and illiteracy, and who is prepared to give human beings hope that there is a future for him or her. It's all those ordinary, everyday people who decide to make a difference in the lives of other people. Those are my heroes. We can... We can all be the heroes that Nelson Mandela so admired. Hope is the most important thing that people need to move forward. The slightest ray of hope can ignite the human spirit's ability to overcome. I know that giving people hope can sound like some kind of soft and cuddly cliche, but actually from my experience, hope is strategic. Hope is a lifeblood. Hope isn't just nice. Hope is a game changer. I wanna show you in a, in a minute for anyone that's queuing this, a brief video of some of my photographs. It just takes one minute uh, from the book uh, that Marty mentioned, The Power of the Invisible Sun. Invisible Sun is a metaphor for hope. The kids that you'll see live down alleyways, in remote villages, and in some cases in war zones. They are child soldiers, refugees, and just plain kids dealing with unimaginably difficult lives. It's hard to be happy unless you're thankful. And it's difficult to be thankful without some context to appreciate what you have. The kids that you're about to meet provide us all context on steroids. Think about how much we all take for granted. Gratitude is as critical to life as breathing. How do we engage each day with optimism and wonder? How do we make each day more vivid? The hope that you see in these kids' eyes is their gift to us, a light to ignite our optimism, and perhaps even our action. Play the video, please.
Thank you. Don't feel bad for these kids. They don't want your pity. I didn't show you their images today so you'd say, oh, look at those poor kids. I, I want to give them a hug. Hopefully, you take strength from their strength. You feel more thankful in your own lives. And in return for that strength and that thankfulness, there's no free lunch here. In return for that strength and that thankfulness, you go find ways to give other people hope. Not just by giving money, but by giving something of yourself. We're entrepreneurs. We make stuff happen. That's who we are. That's what we do. As you change the world, you change yourself. And as you change yourself, you change the world. So now it's time to stop talking. This is your time. The world awaits. Go make a difference. Go make magic. Go make a lot of money. <laughs>